It is so exciting when our new life in Jesus Christ gets going and when things really begin to change. And in this series, The New Normal, we've been talking about some of those changes that we're going through, the new expectations and the new thoughts that we're going to have in that new life. And today, we're going to talk about the new attitudes that God wants in us. And attitudes are things that are in us. They're things we believe, things that we hold on to within that express themselves in our behaviors. And so Paul makes this statement in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. These three things will last forever, faith hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So let's take a moment and look at these heart attitudes that are given to us when we are born again and that are going to express themselves in the behaviors of our life. So let's first talk about faith instead of doubt because each of these attitudes replaces something, right? So faith comes into our life instead of doubt. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we can't see. There are a lot of gnawing doubts, as they're called, in the Christian life, in any life. Questions like, is there a God? Did God really create the universe? Uh, does God care about me? Is God actually involved in my life? Is God good? I think that is the pinnacle question. I think all of the other ones are really just shades of gray and that the real question that's on the heart of every human being is, is God good? Can I trust him to take care of me, to take care of my children or my family? And the reason that question is so prominent is because our experience in life tells another story. I mean, if you read the Bible, and I hope that you are in your new life in Christ, when you read the Bible, you encounter this, this world, this crazy world that's got darkness and enemies and wars and death and earthquakes and smoke and fire and all these crazy things. But in that volatile history, God shows up in these incredible ways. And God overcomes the enemies of his people and delivers his people and gives them victory. But as you read the Bible, the question could begin to surface in your life. What about me? I don't need giants to fall down or walls to collapse. I, I just need to get the rent paid or I need to know how to be a good dad or a good mother or a good husband or a good wife. I, I just want to keep my marriage together. Sometimes, often, okay, all the time, our experience in life counters that simple idea, that simple revelation that God is good. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who calls us by His own glory and goodness. At some point in our lives, we all have to make a decision. Will I trust my experience and will I understand and comprehend God's Word through the lens of my experience? Or will I flip that around and I will I take my life and my experience and look at it through the lens of God's Word? The truth is that God is good, but everything in the world in which you live fights that. And so you have to come to God's word knowing that he's good and receiving and learning of his goodness there. And then you can have faith and to know that God will take care of you. Things are going to be fine ultimately. Hope instead of despair. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Despair is not new. David had despair. Solomon, the richest man in the, the, the Bible, maybe the history of the world, he despaired, living the maximus, maximal life with everything he could get his hands on, and still he despaired. Hezekiah despaired because his enemies attacked him and said horrible things to him. Uh, Josiah was dis- in despair when he saw how far he and his nation were from God. Despair is not new. Hope is new. Hope is a new thing. And hope is the thing that gives birth to the things that all of those men needed. Courage, purpose, deliverance, uh, encouragement, all those things. Isaiah 9, 1 and 2 says that the people in darkness have seen a great light. That is the dawning of Jesus Christ. Despair is not new. It's easy to walk in despair. It's easy to find it. But God gives us hope that Jesus Christ loves us, lives in us, is coming for us, and that we have a secure home in him. So we need not despair. We can now have an attitude of hope. God will show up. God will lead me through this. This is going to work out for my good. And lastly, 
love instead of fear. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love... Love is just key. Love is foundation for everything else. In fact, Paul says in 1 Corinthians that it's the greatest of these. Of faith, of hope, and love. Love is the greatest. And so he tells us to speak love. What if love were the gatekeeper of our lips? What if everything that came out of us were filtered through not just our own love of people, because we can't love everybody, but, but through God's love in us? Then we should learn love. Paul says, if I understood God is love. Everything he does is founded in love. The entire Bible is just immersed in ideas and and hope of God's love for us. And if we are going to ever know God and be party to what he's doing in the world, we have to come to understand love. And in understanding that love, that's where we'll find life and power. So we need to speak love and learn love. We need to believe love. I cannot get over John 21 where Jesus goes to Peter. And already in the Gospel of John, John recorded that Jesus told the disciples, he said, greater love is no one than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. And then in John 21, he goes to Peter and he says, Peter, do you love me? And I think what he's saying is, Peter, I love you. Do you love me? Sometimes this the thing that we need the most in life is, is not to love God more, but to let God love us more. And then our love will be reflected back to him. John wrote later in his epistle, he said, Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. If we could believe that God loves us, do you believe that God loves you, that he likes you, that he wants to be with you? Oh, we've got to speak love. We've got to learn love. And we have to believe love. And then we need to serve love. Paul concludes that paragraph with, if I gave everything, what kind of world would we be in if people that love God gave and gave to the world in which they live? Sex trafficking, human trafficking would go away. Hunger would go away. People would be mentored and helped into healthy lives. We would share all around the world what love could do, what love has already done through millions of people around the world who have given their lives to give to the world because God loved them and they loved others. So my friends, these attitudes, I pray they just engulf our hearts and begin to be expressed in our behaviors. Faith instead of doubt, hope instead of despair, and love instead of fear because perfect love casts out fear. I hope you have a great attitude today.